السلام عليكم سنة خامسة Now today we will talk about the uh, GIT disorders and we'll start with vomiting and diarrhea and the fluid replacement السلام uh, عليكم You see here uh, a case scenario of six month old infant presented with vomiting and diarrhea for the three days duration In this case scenario, you have to ask further question to uh, to reach a diagnosis or differential diagnosis. So, most important thing you should ask about the frequency of vomiting and diarrhea, the amount of vomitus and diarrhea, and the, the diarrheal stool whether it is uh, uh, containing uh, blood or mucus, whether any straining at the stool, any associated fever, convulsion. Any change in body weight of this infant. Most, the most important thing uh, also you should ask about the type of feeding, whether the baby is, is a breastfed or bottle fed, uh, and whether he is bottle fed, you should ask about the type of milk used and the way of sterilization. Whether the mother is sterilizing bottle well or an uh, or incorrect, adequate or inadequate. So uh, this will we will talk about in the uh, clinical practice. So uh, you should ask about this situation. Uh, any uh, diarrhea case at home from where this infant contracting the diarrhea. So you have to ask about the risk factor of developing vomiting and diarrhea this infant. You should also ask about the urine output of this infant, whether urine decreased or not, because this helps us in the assessment of uh, dehydration. So uh, you check for urine output. The appetite of, the, uh, of this infant, whether uh, uh, stay normal or decreased and cannot tolerate anything the mother can give him. Uh, so you should ask about this important question to uh, summarize or put a differential diagnosis. Uh, in cases of diarrheal disease, you have to assess them properly. This slide shows you the Bristol stool chart, and you see there are seven types. First two, first two types are considered constipated stool, hard to pass and hard lump, sausage shape. Type three and four considered normal, passed by healthy people, and five to seven are Consider diarrheal or abnormal stool, excessive fluid containing tend to be diarrheal stool. So when the mother tells you that her infant is having diarrhea, you have to be sure that what does she mean by diarrhea. So diarrhea is an increase in the fluidity, frequency, consistency of diarrheal stool volume and volume passed per day or per motion. So more than 200 gram volume of a stool passed, this is a diarrheal stool. Otherwise, you may see a breastfed baby and passing loose stool frequently. This is usual, especially four or five times or more per day. Uh, Due to gastrocolic reflex, the baby or the infant after each feed, I mean breastfeeding, please concentrate here, focus. Breastfeeding for each feed, there is gastrocolic reflex and the baby pass motion. When you check his urine output, you check his body weight, thriving well, and there is no nothing abnormal, nothing worse. So this is called normal bowel habit.
these are types of diarrheal stool depend on the etiology of the diarrhea and vomiting this one is described as rice water stool which is observed or noted in cases of vibriosis or cholera this is another diarrheal stool here and here and this one is a breastfed baby stool almost uh, loose stool sometimes five or more times per day the infant pass after each feed which is uh, normal this is this slide uh, shows the uh, virus which causes diarrheal disease in children most common especially in winter month anybody knows this one called rotavirus uh, RNA virus affecting the GIT and causing diarrhea here when you check the case scenario you recognize the presentation and analyze it after completing the history taking from the mother or caretakers you come to the physical examination of that infant with the area so what thing you should look for in the physical examination of that infant first of all you should check the level of consciousness of this infant whether he is conscious irritable crying or lethargic or comatose next thing you should check the well-being of the baby whether he looks ill or tired and body built of this infant thriving well or failure to thrive looks underweight next thing continue assessing the level or, or degree of dehydration so first you took the level of consciousness second and third which are very important and we call it key signs of dehydration is response to offer the fluid how the baby respond when you offered him water or milk whether he drink normally or drinks eagerly or drinks poorly or cannot drink at all third one is the uh, skin recoil or skin tear guard if it recoil immediately this is there is no dehydration or mild if it is slow this indicates some or moderate dehydration if it is very slow or tenting it is seen in cases of severe dehydration uh, so these are the uh, three or uh, three key major signs of dehydration level of consciousness response to over the fluid and the skin terga there are other signs which are called adjuvant signs of dehydration like what anybody knows yes like urine output presence or absence of tears moist tongue the breast anterior fontanel tachycardia decreased blood pressure decreased urine output uh, all these are signs of dehydration but they are called adjuvant sign of dehydration in the assessment of the condition so you calculate the percentage of dehydration accordingly you will calculate the fluid requirement of this infant with diarrhea or vomiting so when you your assessment say put on mild dehydration it is five percent or less sometimes simply three percent of uh, body weight loss because of dehydration you know the body uh, composition of 60 or 65 percent in infancy of uh, water so easily develop dehydration this infant because the conservation is uh, very poor especially the rear function the other one is access to uh, water or food is difficult for them 
and their surface area to the body weight is very high, so the loss will be high. So when you assess this theta of hydration, say you put 6% of the body weight is lost. If his body weight was, this emphasis six more, was five kilo. So 6% of the body weight is lost. So this means how many milli liter of fluid lost? Anybody knows? Simply you multiply six by uh, five kilo, which is equal to 5,000 gram. This will and six percent of this five hundred gram. This will lead to three hundred milli of loss. Another example: say ten month old infant with uh, with diarrhea and vomiting and eight percent dehydration. His body weight was eight kilo. So how would you calculate the fluid deficit of this infant? Simply, you multiply 8% by 8,000 gram. So the losses will be 640 milliliter, milliliter of the fluid is lost. So this amount should be replaced to correct the dehydration. Clear? Simply, you change the gram to milli, kilogram, change it to gram, and multiply according to the percentage. This is a mathematical equation. Other, other uh, signs in the examination you should check for Check for temperature because very essential in the replacement of fluid. Each degree above 38 should be replaced by 10 to 12 percent of the uh, uh, maintenance fluid requirement. Other thing: examine the heart, examine the lung, and any problem in the respiratory or cardiac. Examine the abdomen, especially for distension, and check for the bowel sound. Why you check for bowel sound? Uh, which electrolyte mainly lost during dehydration addition to sodium and chloride? It's very essential. It is intracellular cation. Yes, this is potassium. So potassium is very essential for the peristalsis of the intestine. The patient may develop ileus, paralytic ileus with abdominal distension, and sluggish or no bowel sound. So you have to examine the bowel sound. Uh, other point in the clinical presentation is the differential diagnosis. So this infant developed vomiting and diarrhea. So which system affected here? Yes, GIT. And in which form affected? Infectious process. So what do you call it? We call it gastroenteritis. Gastroenteritis. Other differential diagnosis, which may cause similar presentation like vomiting and diarrhea, other than gastroenteritis, yes, disease probably outside the GIT, like uh, respiratory affection in the form of upper respiratory, lower respiratory, bronchitis media, uh, pneumonia, bronchitis, and so on. Other system affected and causing diarrhea and vomiting, urinary system, in which form? Urinary tract infection, yes, urinary tract infection. CNS may be affected and presenting with, with this presentation, like meningitis, encephalitis. Vomiting and diarrhea in children above five years, what do we call it? We call it food poisoning. Food poisoning. Food poisoning, this is good. So, how would you treat this patient? How would you treat him? You treat this infant with dehydration. The priority is replacement of fluid and electrolyte. So, it depends on the state of 
hydration and the degree of dehydration of this infant at time of presentation. So you can judge whether the treatment can be at home or at hospital. And in the hospital, whether you give oral therapy or IV replacement. So it depends on the situation. So whether this patient is conscious, mildly dehydrated, tolerate oral feed, although there is vomiting, but it is occasional, so you can treat this infant at home. Same patient with some degree of dehydration or moderate degree of dehydration with occasional vomiting, you can treat him with uh, oral rehydration solution to replace fluid and electrolyte loss. Whether this patient is severely dehydrated and in shock state, cannot tolerate oral, so you have to resort to IV fluid replacement. Start with bolus therapy to uh, improve perfusion, and then you can give maintenance fluid requirement or start ORS. Start ORS or a rehydration solution to replace uh, electrolyte and the fluid losses. The other point is the antibiotic here is not is not essential. There is limited indication of antibiotic and antidiarrheal and antiemetic agent or drugs in such situation. Why? Because it is self-limiting disease, and you know from your from physiology that the uh, regeneration time of the stomach and intestine is a short time and the uh, stomach and the stomach is two to three days there is regeneration of the mucosa and everything will be okay and vomiting will be uh, will be settled or uh, will be finished and the infant or child can tolerate oral intake same thing is applied to the intestinal mucosa it may take four to five days for regeneration Sometime longer, especially the child is malnourished, affected with some medication affecting the immunity and healing of the intestine. So, gastroenteritis is a self-limiting disease, but in certain situations you may prescribe antibiotic, especially in case of body diarrhea, infant less than three months with systemic illnesses and high fever. Uh, parasites which cause uh, diarrhea like intibia histolytica or GRDL ambilia, you may prescribe antibiotic in this situation. Uh, why we uh, we uh, uh, why we are uh, uh, cautious to uh, give antibiotic in diarrheal disease because many cases especially those caused by Escherichia coli 0157, they are associated with what we call it hemotokuremic syndrome because of the toxin release from destruction of bacteria. So studies notice that complications are more when you are prescribing antibiotic to children with diarrhea. So better to avoid antibiotic in such a situation. Your priority is to replace fluid and electrolyte. If there is fever above 38 and the child cannot tolerate feed or sleep or playing, you can prescribe antipyretic agent paracetamol to relieve fever. Otherwise, there is no need to prescribe uh, antipyretic medication. What about feeding if the child or infant is breastfed so you should continue breastfeeding and whether he is bottle fed you should continue bottle feed and stress the uh, issue of uh, sterilization of the bottle proper sterilization to prevent further attacks of diarrhea in this infant next slide 
so here, why did the infant get vomiting and diarrhea? Risk factor of diarrhea, absence of breastfeeding, contaminated food and drinks, contaminated bottle. Bottle feeding is high risk of uh, uh, high risk of developing diarrhea because most of the infection comes from the infected bottle. Uh, kiss with diarrhea may infect other contacts, especially in schools or daycare centers, health centers. What are the suspected allergic agents? Most common is viral, bacterial, and parasitic. Which type of viruses? First one mentioned, rotavirus, yes, Khaleesi virus, Norway virus, adenovirus, and others. Bacteria, salmonella, species, Shigella, Escherichia coli, Campylobacter, Jejuni, and so on. Uh, Staph aureus may cause diarrhea as preformed toxin. Parasites, we have two important parasites, GRDM, BDA, and Entinibia hysteretica. What are the type of diarrhea? Depend on the duration of the illness, whether acute or chronic, less than two weeks acute, more than two weeks chronic, or here you see a scheme taken from the book. Uh, diarrhea in unit and in older children. Here you see in unit diet related milk protein intolerance and overfeed, necrotizing trocholiti, especially associated with the prematurity, low birth weight, sepsis, RDS, birth asphyxia, and so on. Here, older children, infectious causes gastroenteritis food poisoning, as we're discussing here now. Uh, malabsorption, lactose intolerance, lactose, lactose deficiency, whether acquired or, or inherited. Celiac disease, gluten sensitive enterobath, cystic fibrosis, autosomal recessive disease associated with respiratory problem and malabsorption. Immune deficiency, primary or secondary to HIV infection, or primary agammoglobinemia, hypogammoglobinemia, dysgammoglobinemia, and so on. Others like medication, antibiotics, laxative abuse, and inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's disease and uh, ulcerative colitis. Here, most common cause we mentioned earlier. There is no need to repeat them. You can you can read here. What's the pathogenesis of the infectious? Uh, it may be related to secretory osmotic. Motility problem, increase, decrease motility, and in mucosa formation. But most important thing is secretory and osmotic. Here, secretory, uh, like uh, cholera, toxigenic, cholera, toxigenic E. coli, carcinoid, VIP, varied, vasoactive intestinal peptide, neuroblastoma, congenital chloride, diarrhea, clostridium difficile, cryptosporium, and patient with AIDS. Here, the diarrhea persists during fasting, bile salt malabsorption, and there may be an increased intestinal water secretion and no stool leukocytes. Act is opposite to an inflammation because here there is invasion. You may see blood and white PC. In osmotic diarrhea, when you stop feed, especially in milk, diarrhea will stop. There is an increased breath hydrogen test with Carbohydrate malabsorption, and okay, there is uh, there is no stool leukocytes. Here you may see it lactase deficiency, glucose galactose malabsorption or intolerance, lactulose and laxative abuse. Here the stool is acidic, with reduced substance positive, and there is an increased osmolality because there is sodium and the chloride is high content. So osmotic diarrhea, this will lead to withdrawal of fluid from interstitial compartment to intraluminal and will lead to a great loss of fluid and electrolytes. Here you see an increased transient time, uh, I mean increased motility will lead to decreased transient time and lose to normal appearing stool stimulated by gastrocolic reflux. In cases of post-vagotomy, dumping, thyrotoxicosis, and irritable bowel syndrome. 
Infection may also contribute to this increased motility and decreased transient time. Decreased motility is, here is bacterial overgrowth, defect in neuromuscular unit, and stasis. Loose to normal appearing stool and pseudo obstruction blind loop. Mucosal inflammation, you have bacteria like Salmonella, Shigella, E. coli, Yersinia, rotavirus. There is an inflammatory process and will lead to uh, white BC and RBCs in the mucus in the stool. Enteropathogen can elicit an inflammatory and then inflammatory diet depend on the invasion of the mucosa. Without invasion, the work uh, is done by enterotoxin produced by bacteria. Destruction of the villi by viruses, adherence by parasites like uh, GRD lambilia and adherence and or transplication by bacteria. In inflammation, there is piercing and invading of the mucosa or produce cytotoxin with consecutive fluid and protein in cell and the stool appear RBCs, white BC that enter the intestinal lumen. Here, the differentiation between osmotic and secondary that I mentioned before, you can check it and see it. Most important is the volume and the pH of the stool. Although reduced services are positive here and negative here in secretary there. Mechanism of secretory diarrhea, there is cyclic MP activation, cyclic GP activation, especially in E. coli or calcium dependent clostridium difficile enterotoxin or acetylcholine and serotonin release with neurotransmitter. Paracrine agent like bradykinin. Here activation of cyclic AMP in bacteria, especially cholera and Ishesha coli, Shigella salmonella, or hormone secreted by neuroblastoma, gastrin secreting, anion surfactant, bile salt, and resinolic acid. So these are the degree of dehydration. Now you come to this picture, this one with severe dehydration, lethargic, tenting of the skin. Here is tenting of the skin. This child is irritable crying with malnutrition, and uh, this is a, a case of uh, moderate dehydration with failure to thrive. There is abdominal distension, skin and bone, thin, pale, sparse hair, and there is loss of subcutaneous fat. So this is malnourished baby. When you check the state of hydration, you cannot use the abdomen pinch. You can use the this area side of the or interior of the chest also you can touch the peripheries you can see they are uh, cold cold peripheries because of poor perfusion here also in this especially more clear than this uh, infant and this infant these symptoms mentioned before but we can mention this one Capillary fill time is very important. You can check it, whether it's a prolonged or very prolonged. Here is immediate refill, slow refill. Here is very, very slow to refill. It's called skin pinch. Skin pinch, immediate recoil. If there's no dehydration, it's slow recoil, and moderate or some, and very or tenting. Uh, of the skin and severe dehydration. Here, the infants are at special risk of dehydration because of their surface area is greater in comparison to body weight. So there is greater insensible water loss, 300 ml per meter square per day, uh, equivalent in infant to 15 to 17 ml per kg per day. They have enabled to gain access to fluid when they are thirsty because they are dependent on others. There is a higher basal, basal fluid requirement in comparison to older children, 100 to 120 ml per kg per day, i.e. 10 to 12% of the body weight. 
and the renal function or renal tuber function is immature to conserve a fluid when it is needed inside the body. Your plan of management depend on the clinical decision made it by you uh, when you saw and checked the patient, your assessment, your degree of your degree of, of dehydration you checked on, on that infant. So uh, this decision is guided by uh, answer to uh, many questions making depend on the many questions that you should put in mind and we already discussed this one uh, you see especially your decision whether to treat the patient at home or at health center or at hospital in the hospital you can start ORS or intravenous, it depends on the severity of the problem. Conditions that should be considered in differential diagnosis of acute diarrhea and vomiting, whether the infection is inside the GIT or outside the GIT. So inside the GIT, you call it internal infection. Outside the GIT and causing diarrhea, you call it parenteral, parenteral infection, especially urinary tract, respiratory or CNS. This one, you should keep, keep it by heart, the ORS here of WHO, the content is very essential to be kept in mind, sodium 75 millimole, potassium 20 millimole per liter, chloride 65, base, which is bicarbonate 10 millimole, here in European Society of Pediatric Gastroenterology, Pathology and Nutrition, uh, 16 gram, and here citrate instead of bicarbonate. And the osmolality is 245, and here 240. Uh, you can prepare RS at anywhere by using pinch and fist. Pinch of salt and fist of uh, sugar, or six level, level teaspoonful of sugar, and one half, half level spoon of salt, and add to one liter of water. You can prepare it in the field work, and you help your patient with diarrhea, vomiting, and dehydration. So what expected complication that may happen to this infant, especially when there is delay in the diagnosis and delay in the institution of treatment, it may develop uh, complications, especially uh, when prolonged will lead to malnutrition, failure to thrive, and secondary bacterial infection, so probably outside the GIT, and micronutrient deficiency like zinc and iron. So she is bacteria are well recognized in malnourished children with diarrhea, maybe two sepsis and death. So you have to take care of this problem. Extra understand manifestation. Many system may be affected by diarrhea, especially the uh, CNS, the joint, the skin, any part of the body may be affected. But here is the CNS in form of meningitis encephalitis or convulsion especially developed after high fever or electrolyte disturbance how would you prevent diarrheal disease in children first of all you have to promote exclusive breastfeeding at least in the first six months of life or continue up to two years especially in developing countries improved complementary feeding practice here family should take care of complementary feed, especially bottle feed or other type of feed given to this child. Take care of the uh, hygienic condition. Sterilization of the bottle very essential. Ruta 
virus you get land intratoxin coli immunization so you can prevent them in our country usually we use rotavirus vaccination improved water and sanitary facilities promotion of personal domestic hygiene so sanitary or safe water supply is very important very essential in preventing diarrhea disease improved case management of diarrhea so uh, very essential to prevent disease to others especially in contact with this child now we come to the uh, ORS here you can replace depend on the body weight or age less than 10 years more than 10 years uh, you start with 60 to 120 ml for each bowel motion or vomitus and then above 10 years or above one year 120 to 1 to 240 ml RS for each diarrheal stool mild to moderate you can start with 50 ml to 100 ml per kg over three to four hours the same can be used for replacement and the nutrition here continue breastfeeding continue to feed uh, if you have yogurt banana you can uh, start them and give them to the child uh, pieces of apple can also be used in cases of diarrheal disease procedure dehydration you should start treatment with ringaralactate or normal sign 20 ml per kg iv amount and the perfusion mental is improved then administer 100 ml per kg rs over four hours or five percent dextrose plus half saline what do we mean by half saline this means that the sodium chloride 0.45 percent not 0.9 half Half nine mean 0.45. Okay, at twice maintenance load level. Great. Here, replacement same if unable to drink, administer through NG tube or administer 5% dextrose plus fourth normal saline with a 20 kcl. Here, potassium should not be given unless you ensure your own output. This table is present in Nielsen textbook of pediatrics. Vomiting in children, very important, you may see now and then, whether part of gastroenteritis or other problem, you should uh, concentrate on surgical problem or some emergency problem. So these should be kept in mind, what we call red flag uh, signs that will jeopardize the life of the infant. So it may be simple like regurgitation or positing we call positing and some feeding problem like force feeding or overfeeding if a transient with other symptoms like fever diarrhea or runny nose cough most likely gastroenteritis or respiratory tract infection but you should consider urinary tract infection and meningitis especially when there is full fontanelle or lethargy or convulsion or any uh, other signs of meningeal irritation if projectile vomiting at two to seven weeks you should exclude pyloric stenosis if bile stand here we have intestinal obstruction should be excluded especially following interception malrotation or strangulated inguinal hernia the same thing should be applied in assessment of dehydration and shock state because the patient may die because of severe dehydration and shock before dive with the underlying uh, pathology or cause. So, bile stain, intestinal obstruction, blood in the vomitus, esophagitis or peptic ulcer disease, or swallowed blood from the nose or mouth, or malrotation, projectile vomiting, case of fevers, pyroxenosis. You it may suggest. Are there any symptoms of UTI, like uh, difficulty in maturation, burning maturation, low grade fever, abdominal pain, dribbling, or check for signs of sinus infection or GIT infection? Vomiting at the end of proximal coughing, open cough. Is the infant dehydrated or not in shock? You should check them. And abdominal distension, is there lower internal obstruction? Check for strangulated inguinal hernia. So hernia checked this uh, this table was taken from illustrated textbook of pediatrics fifth edition you can check it the same thing we mentioned before 
uh, depend on the age and the presentation. Most important thing in uh, treating a child or dealing or managing an infant child with vomiting, you have to exclude surgical problem or emergency medical problem like ketoacidosis. So you have to check the blood sugar. Okay. Or embryo-metabolism, especially nothing before abnormal and start recently with vomiting or following attack of a birth infection, the child develop with develop vomiting and acidosis, failure to thrive, you may think of embryo-metabolism. So these are the uh, uh, objective, learning objective that you should learn from this lecture. Before I go to uh, fluid replacement in general, uh, any comment or addendum or question, you can write it down in the classroom and I will answer you gladly. Intravenous fluid therapy, here you see the maintenance fluid therapy depend on the body weight of the child. Or surface area but usually we use the body weight first 10 kilogram you calculate 100 ml per kg second 10 kg 10 kilo 11 to 20 you calculate 50 ml per kg plus 1000 or the first 10 kg a third 10 kg above 20 you use 20 ml per kg plus 1500 ml maintenance initial for this 20 for each kilo above 20 kilogram the maximum total fluid maintenance is 200 uh, uh, 2400 ml of composition normal saline sodium 154 chloride 154 half saline half 154 77 and 77 uh, 0.2 saline mean 34 and here 34. Third, third glucose saline. Ringer lactate contain 130 less than this and 109. But it contain lactate and potassium in addition to uh, calcium. Normal plasma osmolality. How do you calculate normal Plasma osmolality. So you have to have the urea, uh, I mean blood urea, glucose, and uh, sodium and chloride. So you calculate it by 2 multiply sodium plus chloride plus urea plus blood sugar. So blood urea divided by 2.8 and the blood sugar divided by 18. The uh, measurement depends whether it's milligram or millimole. So normally it is 285 to 295 milliosmol per kg. If using an IV solution peripherally with much lower osmolality can cause water to move into the RBCs. Why? From the uh, lower concentration or lower osmolality to higher osmolality to equalize. So the cell will be uh, damaged and hemolyzed because the fluid enter the RBCs. Thus, IV fluids are generally designed to have an osmolality that is either close to 285 or greater. With moderately higher osmolality, do not cause a problem, but lower osmolality cause a problem. Thus, 0.2 or th one third glucose saline osmolality 68 shouldn't be administered peripherally but with the glucose osmolality will be 346 so this is safe so dextrose five percent plus half saline plus 20 ml per kg 20 ml 20 ml equivalent per liter kcl osmolality 472 can be administered safer than this one Maintenance fluid usually contain 5% dextrose, uh, which provides 17 kcal per 100 ml. 
around 20% of the daily calorie need. So when patient kept on IV fluid for longer than three or four days may develop sign of malnutrition and there will be catabolism. So you, you, we, we use it on short term. This is not enough to prevent ketone production and help minimize the protein degradation. Source of water loss in the urine, 60%. Insensible losses, around 35% through the skin and lung, insensible losses. And the stool is 5%. Fever increase, evaporative losses from skin. And these losses are somewhat predictable, leading to a 10 to 15% increase requirement, maintenance requirement for each one degree above 38. So when this infant fever, 38.5, would you replace these 10 to 15 mil? And you have no. It needs one degree increase above 38. It should be 39 and above. So 38.3.4.5.6, there is no need to replace this uh, fluid for this low-grade fever. Replacement of a fluid for diarrhea, the average composition of diarrhea, diarrhea is what I mean, sodium 55 in the equivalent, potassium 25, bicarbonate 15. Approach to replacement of fungal gloss is each milli per milli. So solution 5% dextrose plus 0.2 normal saline plus 20 milli equivalent sodium uh, put, uh, potassium here, potassium, KCL, and sodium bicarb to replace these losses in the RL stool. Replace the stool milli per milli. Uh, Sometimes we, we see children uh, of infant less than one year, so their volume of stool or vomit may equal to 50 to Less than 100, 50 to 75 each power motion. More than one year, it exceeds 100 mil uh, volume of vo vomitus or diarrheal stool. So you should replace them every one to six hours. Replacement of fluid for emesis or NG losses. Average composition here, the sodium is very high, more than the diarrheal stool, potassium less. And the chloride is high because KCL is secreted in the stomach. So approach to replacement is normal saline, very important, plus KCL. Replacement output milli per milli every one to six hours. You should keep in mind. Adjusting fluid therapy for altered renal output, oliguria and urea. Replace patient, place patient on insensible fluid loss, 40 percent or 25 percent of maintenance you give him 25 to 40 percent of maintenance replace urine out of milli per milli with half saline in cases of oliguria or anuria polyuria replace patient on insensible loss 25 to 40 percent of maintenance fluid measure urine output and replace the replace urine milli per milli with solution based on measured urine electrolyte Level. Uh, fluid, man fluid management of dehydration restore intravascular volume by 20 ml per kg over 20 30 minutes. Repeat as needed until perceptible pulse, proper perfusion, level of consciousness is changed so you can resort to maintenance. Rapid volume repletion 20 ml per kg, normal sign or ringer lactate. Maximum one liter over two hours. Calculate 24 hour fluid need maintenance at plus deficit volume. Subtract isotonic fluid already administered in the past 24 hour need. Administer remaining volume over 24 hour using 5% explosive plus half saline plus 20 ml per kg. And here you should ensure your own output, please, before you prescribe KCL. Replace ongoing losses as they are. Milli per milli. So when you, how do you monitor your treatment in this patient? 
vital sign. You shake the pulse and the blood pressure, you shake input, input and output and shake fluid balance, urine output and specific gravity of urine. If less than 10.010, .10, the patient is clinically well hydrated, it may be appropriate to decrease eye fluid. If there's more than this, concentrated urine, there may be uh, still dehydration. And definitely you should check the body weight of this child and check for signs of depletion or, or overload. In case of hypernatremia, when the natrium is more than 150 milliequivalent per liter, you <coughs> calculate it from the, when you check the electrolyte. So restore the intravascular volume, especially here the skin is dewy skin, called dewy skin, when you touch the skin. Sometimes uh, give you imprecise uh, assessment or the of degree of dehydration. So the mother may give her child constated formula or improper preparation of the ORS with sodium load here. So definitely it is hypernatremic as well as in cases of hyponatremia. Most of the cases are uh, hydrogenic. So you replace as usual with normal saline 20 ml per kg over 20 minutes. Repeat until intravascular volume restore. Determine time for correction based on initial sodium concentration. So how you take time to replace, it depends on the level of initial sodium concentration. With 157, this simply 24 hours. When it reach 170, two days you need to replace correction of the fluid. More than 83, 183, it need to three days or 72 hours to correct the fluid losses. If it is more than 184, uh, to 180, 196, more than 84 hours. Administer a fluid at constant rate over time for correction. Typical fluid maintenance well, half dextrose saline uh, plus 20 milliquid case here, less contraindicated in the renal function. Typical rate one quarter, one point. Two five to one and a half times maintenance fluid requirement given in cases of hypertrophic dehydration. Follow serum concentration, adjust the fluid based on the clinical status and serum sodium concentration. Sign of volume depletion administered 20 ml per kg uh, bolus. Sodium decreased too rapidly. Increase sodium concentration of IV fluid or decrease the rate of IV fluid if the serum sodium is not well controlled either increase or decrease the rate of fluid. Sodium decrease too slowly, decrease sodium concentration in IV fluid administered, or increase the rate of IV fluid given. Replace ongoing losses as they occurred before. Linger, ling, ringer lactate, ringer lactate or lactated ringer shouldn't be used because it is more hypotonic than normal saline and may cause too rapid decrease in the serum sodium, especially if multiple fluid boluses are needed. Caesar are manifestation of cerebral edema from an over, overly rapid decrease in serum sodium, so you have not to decrease serum sodium rapidly during correction of hypertrophic dehydration. Acutely increasing serum concentration via an infusion of 3% Sodium chloride can reverse cerebral edema. So this seawater, almost 3% sodium chloride in case of cerebral edema convulsion. Each milli per kg of 3% sodium chloride increases the serum sodium concentration by 1 milli equivalent per liter. And infusion of 3 to 6 milli per kg offer result in resolution of symptoms. Here, in case of hyponatremia, as I told you, it may be or mostly is uh, hydrogenic. Uh, serum sodium is less than 130 milliquid per, per liter. It's correction of intravascular volume depletion with isotonic fluid. Uh, fluid, normal serum or, or regular lactate. An overcorrection in the serum sodium more than 135 is associated with an increased risk of central pontine malunolysis. So you have not to approaching the serum sodium above 30, 135. So central pontine myelinolysis. 
The risk of central pontine mineralize is also increased with overly rapid correction of serum sodium concentration. So it is best to avoid increase the serum sodium by 12 milli equivalent per liter per day. Do not. This can be applied also to hyperatremic dehydration, not exceeding 12 milli equivalent per liter per day correction. Management as usual. To increase serum sodium, by 2 millimole per liter maximum safe rate. Infusion rate milli per hour equal to 8 multiplied by body weight in kg divided by percent saline being used.